we're at Fret's Straven Hotel, we're doing the Marina Redux with Cowboy Mouth. So I just want you to, uh, if you could tell me a wee bit about, obviously we were doing Cowboy Mouth together. So when we started writing the songs, I think we wrote them in Mount Florida, you, yeah. you had some and we worked on them there. What was that process like uh, for you, if you can remember? Well, it was really brilliant for me because before that I'd been obviously in Hipsway and Witness, which was basically Hipsway part two. And the, the songwriting process was a bit more torturous, to be honest with you, especially in Hipsway when it was like almost, in a way it was written by committee. Uh, and that was the first time I felt like it was truly my voice and not, because even in Hipsway, like a lot of the lyrics would be written by Harry. Uh, and brilliant, brilliant they were. Um, so I was kind of like his voice mm -hmm. as much as my own voice. Whereas this is the first time I was just completely in charge of all of that. Um, so that was good. I mean, witness I was in charge of all as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, it just it also it was be, had less. It was less about being commercial and just being mm -hmm. about how you felt. So it was, a, it, was a, it was quite a quite a lot of freedom about it. Because I guess um, obviously you know you did the Jazz of Tears album on Rough Trade, and then you know having massive major success, and you know we've both been in major labels before. It's, it does have its commercial pressures, and it did feel like going back to the independent sector. We're doing the cowboy mouth yeah. stuff. It's kind of like nobody was telling us what to do. No. So it was really brilliant fun. Yeah, I loved it, um, and everything, at that point, everything came easy to me. Uh -huh. like, so, you know, you'd send me a, a cassette, remember them? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, probably a, a, a complete song written on it, but, and I would write the words to it, mm -hmm. and it would be mm -hmm. like, what do you think? And you'd be like, that's great. Mm -hmm. There was never any, you know, to and fro, and we, we just, seem to love what each other did, which yeah. was really, you know, f mm -hmm. very unusual, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, t tonight we're at Fretz in the Straven Hotel and, uh, you know, the bathers are playing Cowboy Mouth and Sugartown and, uh, you know, Mick Slavin playing in Sugartown, playing lap steel, and obviously he played bass in that first Cowboy Mouth record, so it was a real collaborative yeah. endeavour. Um, I mean, that making that record was great because it was all recorded live, uh, apart from the vocal, which was all done pretty much as live because you guys did your thing, one or two takes each song, and then I, I basically did all my vocals in one. I, there was no redos mm -hmm. because time and money were a constraint. That yeah, was the yeah. only constraint we had. Uh -huh. We didn't have anybody breathing down our neck. It was just, you know, time. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, like I remember like we rehearsed a lot, that's what made that possible. I think we rehearsed for a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Paul, he didn't rehearse I think, till the till end. Then, yeah. I remember him coming in at the end mm -hmm. and he'd been in a car crash mm -hmm. and we were like, I mean, he was lucky to be alive. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. He'd been down to see Moog mm -hmm. in London, buying keep weird synthesizers mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, it's, you know, it was just everything. Just we were just having a laugh all the time. Mm -hmm. Remember, like for the next, the next album, not the uh, second album we did. You were down in London, and like we'd been out drinking all <laughs> the night before. I, think it was, I mean, we drank a lot. And we got up in the morning, and I was making a, a making you breakfast, and you started playing guitar, and I started singing while I was cooking, and we mm -hmm. practically wrote a song before we finished our breakfast. Mm -hmm. And was that just that amazing? Yeah. Sort of synchronicity, you know. And obviously we did, there was two albums done with Marina, and you know, for those that don't know, Marina's based in Hamburg, and uh, <coughs> you a really great team, you know, Frank Lenneman and Stefan Cassell. Uh, so Stefan was, was responsible for the design and the aesthetic and the look of the label. W what do you think about uh, that identity that the label had? Oh, that's brilliant. Um, you, de you can definitely tell us. Something's a marina, which mm -hmm. I think is great. I mean, in the almost in the same way you could tell a Smith's cover or something like that. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's all, I think that's a great thing. And, uh, just something I'm, I'm 
very proud to be part of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, Stefan especially, his knowledge of music was incredible. It got mm -hmm. me into a bunch of stuff that I didn't really know I liked. Yeah, <laughs> was, the, the, the record that he gave me that really blew both of our minds was uh, Watertown yeah, by Frank Sinatra. Which is, which is just the best present anybody could have. Still ringing in our lives, isn't it? Yeah, really? so, yeah. Yeah, he's, he had a big influence on in us, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, whether he knew it or not, I don't know, but he, didn't, he was a huge influence. Mm -hmm. And obviously a few years ago there was a sort of anniversary of uh, Yo Marina Records put out, uh, you know, a Goosebumps compilation that had lots of tracks by people that had recorded on the label, you know, Edwin Collins, Roddy Frame, Malcolm Ross, tons of other people, all the bands that are playing tonight. Uh, and we did a show in the Mitchell Theatre, so, uh, and Stefan and Frank came over from Hamburg for that. So, do you have any memories of that night? Yeah, I remember, I think I was like, the, the Frank Sinatra song I was singing, <laughs> I kind of messed it up a wee bit. But thankfully, Davy Scott was there, who mm -hmm. was like, just such an amazing musician. And he was like, mm -hmm. he just, kind of steered me back in uh -huh. into tune because I, I don't know if I couldn't hear myself or what it was but I, I started off in the wrong key uh -huh. but uh, it was lovely it was such a nice night mm -hmm. just hanging about seeing all these people and watching everybody and you know like us all, almost sort of like paying homage to Stefan mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. thank you for yeah I think it was pretty much that. Glasgow saying thank you to Marina for yeah. you know being supportive of uh, you know, Scottish independent yeah, music, I suppose, to an extent. I mean, it's, it's weird, people just seem to have a thing for a certain thing like Scottish music or whatever, mm -hmm. and they kind of pick it up and run with it for quite a mm -hmm. while. And I suppose bringing things up to date, there's, um, you know, Last Night from Glasgow are a really, you know, brilliant label that are uh, reissuing quite a few of the, the marina bands like Sugartown and uh, and the bathers, I mean, have you, have, and obviously they've, they've worked with, with you before, so uh, do you see many parallels between the, the two, the, the independent ethos of both those labels? Well, they're supporting independent, and they're supporting musicians, that's the main mm. thing. And uh, But, you know, there's last night and past night, so uh -huh. the past night is what I've been mostly involved with, but like, I'm kind of hoping to maybe do some something different mm -hmm. with them that, is, that would be a new thing. Mm -hmm. But I'll have to sort that out um, and really think about it a bit. But um, hopefully they're going to put out the first Cow By Mouth album and mm -hmm. maybe the second one and maybe even the Skinner Group record, which mm -hmm. is another thing. Classic unreleased thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've got my fingers crossed for that. Okay, that's great, thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>